So it all started with an Instagram post. I was in Kyoto, I saw a big Omron sign behind me. I was like, you know what? I would like to take a photo with this. You could hear the clicks from over here, I said. And now, good people, we are in Japan. You probably know Omron by their wide product catalog. They over have over 30,000 parts, everything from automotive stuff. We have some game consoles, we have some uh, printers, we have some Omron switches inside the washing machine, and you probably know them. You most likely have an Omron switch inside your gaming mouse. Everything from 20 million clicks to 50 million clicks, even the side clicks are made by Omron. And of course, we have one of my favorite keyboard switches of all, the Romer G. So you guys probably know the Romer G from these large keyboard switches. Now what they're actually in the process of doing is miniaturizing that. They're coming out with a B3KL, and L is for low profile. And what they've done is they've taken that Romer G and done an evolution to it. And that evolution just means optimizing the feel, giving it a clicky feedback, and making sure that it fits in really low profile devices like gaming notebooks, low profile gaming keyboards, and just regular typing keyboards. And that's really what we're here for. This is the original Romer G, which is also known as the B3K. And this is what is the B3KL. You can actually see how small it is. So how did they fit all of that technology into such a small space? Well, we're about to find out. We're here to check out how they are made, how they're designed, and finally, how they're tested to failure to make sure that Omron gets the best product possible into your hands. All right, so let's begin with a quick overview of the B3KL. It's a clicky switch meant for low profile keyboards and notebooks. There is no LED built in to minimize on the bulk of the body. Instead, we have a lens that is centered just like on the B3K or the Romer G for best possible illumination. The total key height is six millimeters. Total travel distance is 2.5 millimeters and the actuation point happens at 1.6 millimeters with the operating force of 55 grams. Right now, it's only being used on the Aorus 17 notebook, but will also be coming to Cooler Master keyboards in the future. I found the design section and conversation to be pretty fascinating because Omron already had the B3K, but miniaturizing all of those main components was not easy. And the entire process from that initial design to production took about three years twice as long as it took to design the B3K. A few reasons for this include miniaturizing all the components while maintaining quality was difficult, and small components also made mass production challenging and expensive, and extra effort was put into longevity of the switches, which are rated at 15 million clicks. Now, a really cool fact is that you know, why did they go with a clicky rather than tactile or linear? And they learned from the Romer G that creating linear first and then adding components inside the limited space of the switch for tactile or clicky becomes complicated and expensive. So it's better to fabricate and perfect the more complicated one, like the clicky type, and then roll out tactile and linear switches later. Another challenge was keeping the centered mounted LED position from the Romer G for even RGB lighting. And here the issue is that low profile, you know, with the LED LED and the keycap are very close, so it's hard to disperse lighting. And LED isn't actually part of the switch, instead it's mounted to the PCB. And Omron realized that the spring was actually causing a shadow, so they used this concentric optical design on the button to disperse light properly, and it now looks really even. Stability of the switch was also important, so the butterfly mechanism is there for balance, and also keeps the centered mounted LED, so there's nothing interfering with that section. They also went through a lot of analysis, focus groups, and redesign designs to make sure the switch feels good. So there's the slider that makes contact with a specially shaped gold contact. And this allows the trigger and the click to happen at exactly the same time, unlike on other blue switches. So here's the breakdown of the switch itself. Not that many components and uh, kind of crazy to think that three years went into designing this. But uh, yeah, that's the background of the B3KL. But now let's get into some of the behind the scenes stuff, starting with quality testing. The Gamer Storm Castle 240 EX gives you a peace of mind with anti-leak tech inside by reducing pressure buildup as temperatures fluctuate. Plus, this is one of the best looking pump designs with the removable mirror cover and swappable logo pieces with full addressable RGB support for that extra bling. Check it out below. All right, so now that you guys seen what goes into the design of this B3KL switch, let's talk about what's happening behind me with all those clicks and clacks. So this is a durability machine. They're gonna run this for 15 days, 1 million clicks per day. That 
is a lengthy procedure. They have a total of 11 of these machines that run before mass production to verify the durability of something like the B3KL switch to make sure that it meets the requirement of 15 million uh, clicks lifespan to be a minimum. They stop this machine every day after a million clicks to make sure all the switch are, switches are running fine. If there is a, a error discovered, they take it out, they make sure that they 3 scan the thing and to see exactly what went wrong and they restart the procedure again from zero and uh, yeah, making sure the durability of the B3KL is on point for 15 million clicks. So guys, we're talking about durability and next to me here are environmental testing chambers. So they test the extremes of the switches. The 3 BKL is actually certified for operation at minus 40 to plus 70 degrees Celsius and now each of these testing chambers will test those switches for 96 hours in the, the extreme heat, the extreme cold, and the extreme humidity. So that allows them to certify them for a wide range of operating conditions. If one of those switches breaks, it's typically brought here. And now this is a scanning electron microscope. And what it does is it goes into really fine grain detail to see exactly what broke. So let's check this out. So right now, this is one of the contacts that is sheared off. And they can actually go directly in and go sub-millimeter and see if there's a stress fracture in any of the materials or if it was actually an issue with another part of the material which broke off. So here you can actually see that part of it sheared off and what they're going to do now is they're going to further analyze this to see if they can modify their development process to improve as time goes on. So guys, they also have a x-ray machine and now what this does is it analyzes the switch either pre-production or post-production if something breaks inside so they can see the internal components without having to take the switch apart. So we are heading to the production line right now but a quick note about the my switches the 20 million clicks the 50 million click switches they are actually manufactured in China by the entire production facility in line is made here in Japan so all the quality assurance is done here so Omron gets their quality and if you see a made in China sticker on an Omron switch for your, you know, for your mouse, you know why. All right, so the production tour was fascinating, but we can't show you the switch assembly in detail to protect their know-how and prevent competitors copying the process. But they do pump out 2000 units per hour. They run for 24 hours a day for 20 days. So about a million switches total was produced in this initial production run. It is quite impressive to see what quality assurance elements they have built into the line, like these tolerance checkers that spit out any out of tolerance switches and also the monitor pressure in the machine. Once the switch is assembled though, this last step measures electrical conductivity to make sure contact is being made and it checks for the actuation points and other electrical characteristics. Now at any point if there is an issue and the switch is rejected, it is not actually thrown out. All are checked to see what the problem was and then adjustments are made. So about 3.5 to 5% are rejected through the process and at the end here we have this module that sorts the type of air that they can log and if large quantities are rejected based on one particular air, they will analyze it in more detail and adjust the production line accordingly. Once they are packaged in a bag of 100, there are random inspections per badge, percentage from every lot is checked and validated before everything is shipped to the consumer. And finally, here's a sound sample from the Aorus 17 gaming notebook. So guys, this has been an incredible journey coming to Japan, seeing what Omron is all about and seeing the whole development and talking to the engineers of what made the B3KL possible. And that B3KL, I can't wait to see it in more products. The entire production line is just so interesting to witness how it's made and what comes out of it in the end, what goes in the beginning, all the little parts. And I hope you guys enjoyed this journey with us as well. Stay tuned for more content. Check out some other relevant videos up there, up there. and somewhere around the screen. And Thanks we'll see you. Watching. We'll see you in the next one. Yes. Yeah. Bye bye. There's cameraman. the cameraman right now. Yes. <laughs> right. That's Justin. And there's there's his posse. Yes. Yeah. We we, we got the rest of the crew. We got the rest of the crew. <laughs>